after the events of the Colosseum Vault, which resulted in Lucy Stillman's death, Desmond Miles entered a comatose state and awoke in the Animus's Black Room. Within the Black Room, Desmond met the virtual construct of Abstergo's 16th test subject, Clay Catch Merrick, who explained that in order for Desmond to regain his consciousness, he must relive the remaining memories of his ancestor, Ezio Adottore da Firenze, until a sync nexus triggered. In March of 1511, Ezio travelled to Masayev after he discovered a letter by his late father regarding the secret library of the assassin mentor Altia ibn Lahad that was rumoured to contain his invaluable knowledge hidden beneath the old assassin fortress. There, he was greeted by a battalion of Templars led by Leandros. He later found the entrance to the library, but learned that it needed special keys in order for it to be unlocked. The hired worker that was present in the antechamber to the library mentioned to Ezio that the Templars found one of the keys beneath the Ottoman Sultan's palace, while speculating that the book held by Leandros would lead them to the others. With this in mind, Ezio set out of the fortress to take the book from Leandros and eventually killed the Templar captain at Atlas Village after a long chase. After obtaining the book, Ezio set out for Constantinople, where the rest of the keys were hidden. By May, Ezio had arrived at Constantinople and was greeted by the leader of the local guild, Yusuf Tazim. Yusuf gave Ezio a tour of the city, introducing him to the guild and showing what was left of the Byzantine Empire within the city. After helping the guild recruit a few new initiates and being taught how to use bombs, Ezio went to the first location of the Keys, now a bookshop owned by Sophia Sartor. After an introduction, Ezio found an entrance to the Yerabatan cistern, where he found the first key along with the tome of an encrypted map that led to rare books which held the location of other keys. Striking up a mutual agreement, Ezio made a promise with Sophia. If she helped decipher the map, he would let her borrow and print a few copies of the books. In the midst of his search, Ezio helped Yusuf save the Ottoman prince from a planned assassination, which earned him the favour of the prince, Suleiman I. Following this, Ezio later met with Suleiman in order to learn of the perpetrator behind the attack, whom they suspected was the Janissary captain, Tariq Barletti. Tailing Tariq, Ezio soon found out that the man had dealings with Manuel Palelogos, the former heir of the Byzantine throne. With this knowledge, Suleiman requested that Ezio assassinate Tariq. However, in his dying moment, Tariq revealed that his forces were to ambush Manuel after gaining his favour. Before dying, Tariq entrusted Ezio to continue his plan and set sail for Cappadocia. In between his tasks for Suleiman, Ezio continually searched for the books with Sophia's help. With each book, he was able to retrieve one of the keys from one of the many secret locations, and with each one, he was able to relive some key moments of Altair's life. The first key showed his heroic efforts in 1190, where Altair saved Masaya from an attack by the traitor Haras. The second key detailed his mentor Almoalam's pyre and Abba Sophian's failed rebellion through utilising an Apple of Eden, which Altair later retrieved. The third memory detailed Altair's fall from power in 1228. After defeating Genghis Khan's army with his son Darim and his wife Maria, Altair found out that Abbas had usurped command from Altair's appointed proxy Malik al Saif, and that his son Sef was murdered by Swami, Abbas's right-hand man. Altair confronted Abbas and his loyalists, but was overcome with rage and used the apple for revenge, which ultimately caused the death of both Swami and Maria. In the wake of this incident, Altair left Masayaf with Darim before Abbas could apprehend them. The fourth key showed Altair's return to power in 1247. He achieved this through Abbas's death at his hands, where Altair used his newly crafted hidden gun. All the while reliving Ezio's last memories, Desmond also relived his own memories in a very different simulation, wherein he reached the core of the Animus. There, a recollection of his life was told. Ezio arrived at Cappadocia by March 1512. There, he met with Tariq's informant, Dilara. Dilara was eventually captured after she and Ezio parted ways. With haste, Ezio rescued Dilara and managed to cause an explosion that ensued enough chaos to draw out Manuel Palelogos. The assassin then managed to corner Manuel after a long chase and killed him before he could escape by the city's inner harbour. As a result, Ezio managed to obtain the last key from Manuel. 
Just then, Ezio saw Prince Amet on a ship with the Byzantines. Amet revealed his true role as the Byzantines' Templar's leader. There, he threatened Ezio into handing over the key, and after the assassin's refusal, Amet threatened to hold Sophia Sartor captive. Despite Ezio's warnings, Amet went ahead and set sail back to Constantinople. Hurriedly, Ezio escaped the burning city and made his way back to his boat, and on the way back, he relived the fifth key's memory of Altair's life. The fifth key revealed Altair's twilight years in 1257. Niccolo and Maffeo Polo were preparing to leave for Constantinople to establish a guild after their stay in Masayev. Altier gave the brothers his codex as a parting gift and escorted them out of the city with Darim, defeating any Mongol who drew near by using his Apple of Eden. As the brothers left on their horses, Altier gave him the keys, which he asked to be hidden from others, so that the one who was meant to know the message could seek it out. Ezio later returned to Constantinople, hurriedly making his way to Sophia's bookshop. There he found a platoon of assassins dead, as well as Yusuf. Filled with rage at the slaughter, Ezio made his way to the harbour of Theodosius. Amet had one of his men hold Sophia by the edge of the Galata Tower. Pressured into decision, Ezio gave the keys to Amet and went to Sophia's rescue. However, the woman was only a decoy and the real Sophia was about to be hanged somewhere else. Ezio hurriedly made his way to her, managing to save her just in time. As Sophia recovered, Ezio watched as Amet's carriage left the city, before he spurred himself and Sophia into one of their own to give chase. Fortunately, Ezio managed to catch up to Amet by the city's countryside, eventually causing his carriage to fall, along with Amet and himself. The assassin then retrieved the keys while contemplating what to do with Amet. As he did, however, Amet's brother, Salem I, arrived with a platoon of Ottoman guards and Janissaries. Salim then murdered his brother by pushing him off a nearby cliff. Meeting with Ezio, Selim went on to threaten that Ezio be killed if he returned to Constantinople, sparing him only due to Suleiman's good word. After returning to Animus Island one last time, Desmond became witness to the Animus' scheduled deletion, seeing everything dissolve in front of him. Clay, knowing full well what was going on, embraced Desmond one last time and then pushed him back into the digital portal, saving him from being deleted by sacrificing himself. Desmond hesitantly left Clay and the island and relived the last of Ezio's memories. Ezio and Sophia arrived at Masayev. There, Ezio reflected upon his life and decided to retire after learning the contents of the library to spend the rest of his time with Sophia. Arriving at the library's door, Ezio utilised the five keys and managed to solve the puzzle etched into it before he made his way inside and soon found the library. Void of books except for the seated remains of Altair. His corpse held one last key, where his last major memory was imprinted. By the end of 1257, Altair had emptied the fortress and had all of his assassins dispersed. Meeting with Darren one last time, Altair ordered him to leave so that the fortress would be empty when the Mongols returned, him staying within the library along with the apple. Embracing his son one last time, Altair locked himself in the library and then placed the apple on a pedestal. The assassin then sat on one of the chairs, holding his last key, and imprinted his memory before dying at the age of 92. After reliving Altia's final memory, Ezio went to inspect the mentor's Apple of Eden by the pedestal, though he decided it best for the piece of Eden to stay where it was, before finally laying down his arms as a sign of retirement. There, the apple activated as Ezio called out to Desmond. The assassin admitted and accepted his existence as a conduit for a message not meant for him, asking Desmond to make the bloodshed in his life mean something. As an apparition of Desmond appeared, Ezio reached out for him, triggering the Sync Nexus. Within the Nexus, Desmond met Jupiter. There, the ultimate fate of the first civilization was revealed. Their people had several temples built to study ways on how to save themselves from the coming great calamity about to occur. Each temple tried different methods in stopping the event, and had their data subsequently transmitted to the Grand Temple. Despite their efforts, their methods proved to be ineffective, which eventually caused the downfall of their civilization, bringing them to near extinction as well as humanity. Jupiter then showed the location of the Grand Temple to Desmond, which was in New York. Jupiter, along with Minerva and Juno, entrusted Desmond to stop the coming of the second catastrophe. 
After hearing the words of Jupiter, Desmond awoke from his coma and was greeted by his father, Rebecca and Sean. As he stood up, Desmond assured the team of what he needed to do. The team then exited the van and made their way to the Grand Temple. Thank you for watching that everybody. If you liked this video and you want to know more Assassin's Creed lore and backstory and recaps and everything, then subscribe to Jam Punch because I'm going to be releasing a brand new Assassin's Creed video every single week. My name is George, this is Jam Punch, and I will see you next time.